Hi everyone, welcome to another quick Elementor layout tutorial. My name is David from DevDen Web Dev, and in today's video, we'll be looking at how to create a recipe menu list using the Elementor loop grid, where each recipe item has the recipe's image, title, a standard price, as well as the discounted price, and then it has a short description. This question was asked by one of my community members, so I'm going to use Elementor for this. But in a future video, I'll do the same layout using a slightly different method, and I'll use Bricks Builder. Then I'll also use Generate Press and Generate Blocks, so you can watch out for those. But this tutorial is just going to be focused on Elementor. So now let's go ahead to see how everything is set up. So we've used ACF to create the recipe post type. We've also created some field groups for the post type called recipe fields. And then within there, we just have two meta fields. One is the price. Then we have the discounted price and they're just number fields. And that's it for the custom post type. Then the other plugins we have installed are ACF, which is free. Then we have Dynamic Visibility for Elementor by Dynamic U, which is also free. You can also get their Pro plugin, which is the Dynamic U Dynamic Content for Elementor. Then we have Elementor and then Elementor Pro. This is the only Pro plugin here that you need. The other two are just to make my life easier. So now that we have all of those, let me go ahead and start the design. But before we jump into the design, you have to make sure that under Elementor, Settings, and then Features, that you've activated the grid container as well as the Flexbox container. Then once you've done that, you can go to the bottom and press Save Changes, and we can jump right into the edit screen. So here we are on the Elementor edit screen. The first thing you need is your loop grid. So go ahead and drop in a new loop grid widget. Then we need to create a template. So click on Create Template, click on Save to open up the template editing area. Before you start doing any edit, the first thing I like to do is to rename things so that it keeps everything organized. So if you have the top bar experiment active, you see the cog icon at the top. But if it's not active, then the cog icon will be somewhere at the bottom left of your screen. So mine is at the top because I have the top bar experiment active. So click on the cog icon. It will open up the loop item settings. Under there, just rename it. I'll say recipe menu list template so that I can easily remember it. Then under the preview settings, change it from post to whatever your post type is. Mine is recipe. Then I'm just going to choose one. These are native Nigerian foods. So in case you're ever in Nigeria, you can ask for some of these food items. So now that we have that, let me apply and preview. And then everything is set. So let me go back, save and back. I don't like to start the actual editing first. I like to go ahead and set up everything for the template so that the preview area is the right size. So I'll go save and back. Then I'll now locate my template again. This is the loop grid. Then the first thing I want is that the columns is going to only be one because everything is just going to be stacking one on top of the other. So let me go say one. And the items per page, I think there were only four. So I'll say four items. Then the next thing is the query. I'll set up the query again. So from posts, I'll choose it to be recipes. And then can I publish it and go back to start editing the template. So under the layout, we can now finally start editing the template. So you see now it's taking up the proper space in the page. Previously, you're just taking up that small space because you thought there were going to be four items, but we want only one item per row. So that's why I like to always set up everything first before I actually start editing the template. So now let's go back and look at the layout and see what we need to add in. So from the layout, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a mixture of CSS flex and grid to create this layout. I'll use grid for the outer layer, which will 
divide it into two, so one for the image and one for the content. Then I'll use flex to wrap all the content together. Then for the widgets I'm going to be using, so grid container for the wrapper container. Then I'll use an image widget. I'll use a heading widget for the heading, another heading widget for the standard price, one for the discount price, and then a text editor widget for the description. Then I'll add a final heading widget, which will show up if there is no discount price, because we don't want it to be strike true when there is no discount price. So now let me go ahead and start dropping in all the items and then you see what I mean by everything I've said. So I'll click on the plus icon and choose the grid layout. Then I'll choose the two column grid. Then I'll drop in all the widgets. So click on the plus icon, starting with the image widget. Then I'll use a container to wrap the content. Next is the heading widget for the title. Then we need three other ones for the prices. So I'll click and just press Control D to duplicate. One, two, three. Then finally, I need one more for the description. So the text editor widget. So now that I have all the items in there, I'll go ahead and rename everything so that we can understand what we are using each item for. And I have that. Let me start doing everything from scratch. So starting from the grid, make sure that the content width is set to full width. Then for the grid columns, let me take away the outline. We don't want it to be two equal columns. We want the image to take up just a small space, then the rest of the space taken up by the content. So change the unit from FR to the pencil icon. And I'll say probably maybe the image will be like a mean of 100%, comma, maybe 10 rem. Then the rest of the space taken by the other one. So I'll just say the main max of 0, 0,1 FR so that it can actually shrink and doesn't cause overflow. So now we have that. The next thing is the rows. So click on the pencil icon and I like to set it to auto. Then the gap, I'll leave it at the default for now. The justify content, leave it at default. The align items, I'll set it to center. Then let me go ahead and adjust the image. Typically, we want the heading to be the first item within the card. So I'll drop the image below the card and I'll use CSS to readjust everything back. So let me go to the image and then go to under the advanced tab. And then when you see order, just set the order to start so that you can go back to the start. Then under the content, change the dynamic data tag to featured image. Then under the style tab, set the width to be 100%, so it fills up the entire space that is available. The height, percentage, set it to 100% as well. Object fit, set it to cover. And the next thing is we're just adding some border radius. So go to the border radius and maybe I'll just give it like eight pixel. Publish. So the next is the content now. So for the content, let me start adding in. The first is the title. So post title. And then I'll just assume it's an H3. So let's use H3, depending on how it is within your design. Then the next one is an ACF field for the standard price. So ACF, click on the wrench icon and then choose the price. Then under the advanced tab, the before, we need to add in the currency symbol. So that's set. So now on the HTML tag, just put a span tag. Then for the discount price, we'll do something similar. So dynamic data. ACF, this time choose the wrench icon and choose the discount price. Now the advanced tab, before we add in the currency and then I'll choose the span again. Then 
do the same thing for the next one. This time is the price. So ECF, wrench icon, price, and the Naira symbol, and the HTML tag, span. So we have those three. Then the last one is description, the dynamic data. And this time we're looking for the excerpt. Then click on the wrench icon and choose to generate from the content. So everything is put in there now. So let me publish this. And now I can close that up. So now it's time for actual styling. So the first one, I go to the style tab, another typography settings, I'll just choose my own typography that I've already created. Then for the container itself, so that's the container wrapping the content, so that's the content wrapper. What I want to do is use Flexbox for it. So content width, always remember to change it from box to full width. We we'll use the Flexbox in this case, and then change the direction to the row, then the Flex Wrap to Wrap. So we're getting somewhere now. Next thing we need to do is, first we want our description to always take up the full space as much as possible. So go to the Advanced tab for your description, and then set the width from default to 100%. So that one's taking up as much space as possible. Next is our title. What we want is that the title to take up as much space as it can, because we're going to be using the title to add in the dotted lines. So for this title, we now go under the advanced tab, and then under the size, just set it that we want it to grow. That's basically setting the flex grow to one. So we're done with the title. We have done something to the content. So now let's start tackling the prices. So we'll start with the first one. We want the standard price to have a strike through. So all we have to do is go to the style tab, then go to typography and simply change the decoration to line through. And we get that line through it. Then maybe you can change the color to something lighter. I'll just say text color and just drop it down because I, I don't have any time to add something actually. So I just drop it down a bit. Light enough that it is able to be distinguished from the other ones. So next one is the discount price. This one I'll just probably give it some bolder text. So typography, maybe something as bold as the title. Then for the other one to do the same thing. Typography and just make it as bold as the title. So now we have our title and our price. And then the discount price is there. So I can publish this. The final step we need to do now is basically just use the dynamic conditions to hide the items depending on which one is showing up. So I'll go to this first one. Go under visibility, because we have that dynamic visibility for Elemental Active. Then activate visibility. We say we don't want to keep the HTML, because if it's not there, the HTML should not be there. And the only thing we're interested in is dynamic tags. And we want it that basically this should show up if there is a discount price. But if there's no discount price, this too should not show up. So we say, we want it to show up if there's any value, and then we choose the ACF field. Click on the wrench icon, and simply pick a discount price. We do the same thing for the other one. Visibility on, then we go to the dynamic tags, this one, and then choose ACF field, Settings, the key should be the discount price. As long as this discount price has a value, then it should show up. And the final one is the opposite. So this one, visibility, dynamic tags. You choose the other option. 
So when there's no value, then pick our ACF field, settings, and this time we choose the same thing, the discount price. Now when you publish it and preview on the front end, see, there you have it. The first one doesn't have a discount price, so it's only the main price that is showing up. The others have a discount price, so it's the, the standard price is cancelled out, and then there is the discount price. So that's it. You can now adjust the width, and if you don't like the design whereby the height of the image is growing, then you can just give it an aspect ratio so that it's always a square. But if you like it like this, then this works for you. So let me show you what you can do if you don't want the image to fill up the entire space. You can just go back, go to the image, under the advanced tab, under custom CSS, just say selector. And then image, aspect ratio, one slash one. Publish it, preview on the front end. And you see, the images are now always going to be in a square shape. The other things you can watch out for is the space between them. You can do that by under the container. The gap between elements is set to 20 pixels. You can reduce that. So maybe say so we want them to be 10 pixels spaces between the columns and the rows. That will work. Publish this. And we've sorted out the main problems. So you can get this design. The only two things left is we want that dotted line underneath. Then we may want to reduce this size in a bit because maybe it's too big. Because once it's like this, it's, it's too hard to read. And then another thing we can add is a bit of text to explain these numbers. Because to a screen reader, these numbers will definitely not make sense. Because this will just be calling out 2,500, 1,800. It will not actually explain what these numbers are for. So you might want to add some hidden descriptive text and explain what each of these numbers are for. Because if you see like under Amazon or some other places, they show you the discount price first, then they write RRP before they show you the other price so that when the screen reader is reading it, it reads out RRP so the person knows that that is the retail price and knows that there is a difference between the two numbers. So now let's tackle the dotted line. So I'll go back, go to the price, not the advanced tab, go to the custom CSS, and then just say selector. Then you remember the tag that you put here under the content. I chose H3, so that's what we're going to use. So advanced tab, custom CSS, and then we'll reference that H3. Then we'll simply use an after pseudo element. So double iPhone after. Then I'll open the curly braces and then say content first. There has to be a content. Then after that, we need to just put the dotted line. So we'll use a border. So border bottom two pixel solid and say maybe black i'll change this later then flex grow should be one then finally we now have to make sure that the h3 itself is a flex so selector h3 display flex and that's it so not rather than solid it should be dotted so dotted now, yeah, we have it. Publish. Look at the front end, and we get our dotted line. We get our title, get our price, and description. So, for the screen reader text, you can probably say something like, let's go to the first one, go back, then go to the wrench icon again, under the advanced tab. So before the Naira symbol, just say, Span, then give it the class name of SR 
only and add in some text that you may want to add so maybe say original price it won't show up because Elementor already has a class name for us this sr only will basically hide the text from us visually but screen readers will be able to read that text so now that we have that one then we'll go to the next one do the same thing go to the wrench icon advanced tab before the naira symbol we do a span slash span class equal to sr hyphen only then within the actual text area we can say maybe this is discount price and that is what will show up for the discount price you can also add a text for the other one too then finally you can exit and reduce the size of the actual loop grid so let me open the inspector I want the loop grid under the advanced tab go to the width say custom then maybe the pencil icon and then I can say probably like 65 characters depending on how you want it so just say main 100% comma just so that the max width is 65 characters but it will get to 100% on smaller devices so then it's not having a better shape then publish the only thing left is to check for responsiveness so we go back to the edit template and start checking for responsiveness so we go to the next one the next one let me hide all of these so it's easy to see everything so start again so this they are looking except this one is not looking okay so from the tablet mode there's something wrong and that is because Elementor has default to set it back to two so let's go back and ensure that the loop grid so go to the settings the content tab see it changes it back to two so make sure it's one check all of them make sure they're all set to one so they're all set to one now so now we can start looking again this is set it still looks okay this still look okay this looks okay and then when it gets to mobile it switches okay so everything is okay you don't have to do much work so just remember that the items per column you have to set everything to one for both tablet mobile and desktop and everything should ideally work out well without you having to do anything so that's what elementor tries to do they try to help you to get responsive mode without having to put in any effort but sometimes you may get it wrong so make sure you check through all of the different device and see if everything is okay then you can go back to the front end and preview everything on the front end and see everything should be fine okay so this isn't hiding properly so i was wrong elementor doesn't use the sr only class name but you can always edit it yourself i will leave a link to the code in the description below so let me go back edit it and go back to each of them let the settings i already have one i set up called so that should ideally work now you go to the next one and then let's publish it and look at it on front end now it works so i'll leave a link to it in the description below the code is fairly simple you can search up for sr only code and then you see different snippets 
that you can use. So it, yeah, that's it. So I hope the video has been helpful. If it hasn't, sorry, I've been rambling. I've been not feeling too good. But hopefully you found some information in the video. And in the next video, I'll try to make sure I explain things better. So watch out for the next video. And I'll see you next time. Bye.